But it's amazing how easy it is to climb over any kind of hill. All that loose dirt. An ordinary motorcycle, that back wheel would be spinning and throwing dirt up in the air. But with this two-wheel drive, it just grips. And now that I'm in low, like this is a regular motorcycle, you'd be fighting that front wheel like this, you know, but it's, it's doing the work. It's pulling you through. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. Today's something really unusual, something I remember from when I was a kid. This is a Rokon, or Rockon as it was originally called, but we call them Rokon motorcycle. It's the only two-wheel drive motorcycle, meaning both wheels are powered, the front and the back. How is that possible? You'll find out. You know, when I was a kid, I would always hear about these. I grew up in New England, and I never really saw one, but when you bought Popular Mechanics, or any of those, not so much motorcycling, or cycle world, or cycle, but usually it was popular, it'd be a little ad in the corner up near the back page, go off-road riding, two-wheel drive motorcycle, climbs everything, it floats, it goes in water. And I thought, well, what is that thing? And it was one of these, but I never, ever saw one. And uh, they say that you sort of seek out the vehicles you remember when you were seven, eight, nine years old, the ones that made an impression on you. And, and this was one of those motorcycles. Well, let's meet the owner of this motorcycle. Michael Plimmer, and the owner of the company, uh, Tom Blake. Come on in, gentlemen. Nice to see you. Thank you, Jay, well, for this having is, us. Yeah, I mean, this is fascinating to me because this is the ultimate niche vehicle. It's built for a specific purpose. Michael, how, how long have you had it? Uh, I got it in 2017. Okay. Yeah, in the summer, I think. Did you buy it uh, new? Yes, I did, okay. yeah. And yeah. why this versus a Kawasaki, Honda, BMW dirt bike, why? Well, I had a Kawasaki, I had a, I had a Super Sherpa. That was the first bike I learned to ride on. Right. Uh, and then quickly discovered that I don't really care about going fast. Right. Um, and then I saw one of these online years before I actually saw one in person. It kind of just grabbed my imagination. Well, that's the thing, it sticks yeah. with you, because <laughs> I was probably 13 or 14 when this came out in the early 60s, is that correct? That's correct. Like 63, 4, 5. It was, it was never in any of the big magazines. It was always like up in the corner with the x-ray glasses that you could buy. <laughs> Remember, you could see your, your bones in your hand. You could see bones in your hand, but you could see women naked. I never quite understood how the x-ray <laughs> glasses worked. But okay, but you know, and magic tricks. And there'll always be that little ad in Popular Mechanics. Go anywhere, do anything. I go, well, how could it be a two-wheel drive? I understand four-wheel drive cars, but a two-wheel drive, and so, this is the first one I've ever really seen up close. So does it do everything you expected it to do? Yeah, yeah, it does. In fact, the, the limiting factor in this whole rig is me. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of things that I won't try just because I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this thing has handled pretty much everything I can throw at it so far. Now, I remember when I first saw it, the wheels were much bigger, the tires were a little smaller. But in the wheels, you could put water or gasoline or anything you wanted. You could carry, what, four gallons? Originally, it was four and a half gallons per wheel. Wow. This vehicle is two and a half gallons per wheel. Okay. Now, why did they get rid Because I remember it, it was like ivory soap. It floats because if you didn't put anything <laughs> in, in the wheel, you could actually float this across. Well, one of our strategic decisions to switch to a smaller wheel was twofold. One was because there are much better tire choices for a 12-inch diameter wheel in the market, and we used a lot of traditional ATV tires. And number two, because we invent, got a patent on front suspension in the all-wheel drive design, and that raised the, the height of the bike up. So then we got back to the same height, and we didn't want the bike to be too high with a 15-inch wheel. Right, okay. And what air pro what are you looking at, 18 pounds? Oh, no, we ride these at low, low pressure, uh, 7 PSI. Oh, 7? Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah, I sort of get that it, with terrain. It just makes yeah, you, okay. we want to. The idea is that the tires are giving you some some uh, shock absorption, particularly in mountains and rough country. Right. Because you can go places 60 percent grade. I've ridden it personally up to the Chile and Andes. Uh, Michael's ridden got 12,000 miles on his all over America. Wow. And he's been everywhere. A lot of our owners send in incredible stories. We were the only vehicle, for example, to uh, conquer the Darien Gap 
You know, what is the Darien Gap? I think I saw that on Star Trek. Yeah, <laughs> that's when the uh, yeah, I can't remember the. That is the Pan American Highway. Oh, okay. Which goes from the top of Alaska down to Terra del Fuego in Argentina. There's a hundred and thirty mile gap in Panama primarily. Right. And it's very watery and nasty. And this vehicle has actually done it twice. Two different riders have really? done it in the 60s and again in the 80s. And how many cc are we talking? This bike is a four-stroke overhead valve, 208 cc, seven horsepower. It's okay. electric start and pull start. The original bikes were only pull start. Okay. So it's basically a lawnmower type engine. It is. Was it, it Briggs and Stratton I like to in early days? It's an industrial engine with industrial a high, engine. high torque. High, high torque. torque because that okay. its its ability to tow is legendary. It can tow up to two thousand pounds. Wow! It can carry six hundred pounds on the frame, so it's a true workhorse. Well, that's so, interesting that you say that because when people hear seven horsepower, they go, "Oh!" But horsepower sells vehicles. Torque wins races, and this is this is all torque. This yeah. is about work. This yeah. is about climbing mountains, going through difficult terrain, keeping your balance at a sixty percent grade at half a mile an hour, not having to speed up the mountain. Right. Go slowly. So walk me through this drivetrain, how the drive shaft uh, goes through. Sure. So off the transmission in the rear of the bike is a drive shaft that travels through the center of the bike, the center tube of the frame, to a universal joint that drives a 90 degree gearbox, which drives the chain on the opposite side. So you see a chain on the opposite side here on the left side as you sit on the bike, and a chain here on the right side in the rear. Uh, the key to it is a slip clutch that appears in the middle that disengages power to the front on corners, but as you re-engage and straighten out, it re-engages the power. Okay, now does it do it because it feels the wheel slipping, or yes. does it do it it's because slip, the handlebar is It is turned. a slip clutch. Okay. It is a slip clutch. As soon gotcha. as it feels it slipping, it disengages. Okay, okay. Now let's get back to the power plant. It's a Kohler, Now I, I think of Kohler as bathroom faucets. And, is, yes. it the same, is it the same company? I'm sure it's the exact same company yeah. in Kohler, Wisconsin, a great American company. Yeah. But believe it or not, besides all their bathroom products, they make an incredibly huge line of motors that appear right. a lot in lawnmowers and different things. So we use an industrial motor that they have. It's a seven horse, 208 cc overhead valve, four stroke motor made by Kohler. It has electric start and pull start. Uh, it's a beautiful piece of engine. Um, it, it is very well made, very reliable, very good delivery of torque. Now, is this engine made specifically for you guys, or is, the, is this an uh, off-the-shelf application for other things? And they, yeah. it's just it's primarily an off-the-shelf motor, but this is a version of that motor right. that they make just for us. We have gotcha. some tweaks that we have to do for different things for our application. So our, we actually have a model for us. Was the first engine, when there's a man named Charlie Fenn, I think, he invented the, the whole idea. Was it a Briggs and Stratton then? No, it was a, it was a Chrysler Power B. Oh, two well, stroke, okay. 134 okay. cc, eight horse, which they could get it up to 10 horse in later years by right. whether an expansion chamber on a special muffler. Now, top speed's about, what, 35 miles an hour? Top speed on this bike is 35. The original bikes was 25. We're not noted for speed. Obviously, right. we're noted for lo carrying loads and going difficult terrain. Now, let me ask you a question. Is the speed limited by the design of the front wheel drive or strictly by the power of the engine? Partly by the engine, partly by the clutching. Right, okay. Okay, because the clutch is designed to do a certain thing at, at, at up to, up to 3,000, 4,000 RPMs. Yep. Now, Michael, let me ask you something. This gas tank looks rather small. 2.69 gallons. Does this get incredible yeah. mileage, or is it, it, it seems to me like this would have, I remember BMW in the 70s had that sort of interstate, that giant tank, because, mm -hmm. I mean, you're in the middle of the woods, two and a half gallons doesn't seem like it's going to get you very far. About 200 miles, but it depends on terrain, obviously, right. and, and altitude. If you're up above 10,000 feet, you're probably not going to get as good did you ever mileage. make it? It seems like you've got all this room well, to get, get a bigger tank. Um, we could have had a bigger tank, but like Mike says, it's going to go 200, 200 miles in the main tank. Right. And you also have the storage in the wheels. Right. We could have had a bigger tank, but we really don't need that. That's not an issue because most of our owners, 200 miles is a long way in rough country. Now, if you can store gasoline in the wheels as well, Yes, correct? and we can use a siphon pump, a uh, simple siphon pump to siphon it up, or the tank itself comes off with one bolt and there's a shutoff valve on one side and you can lift the tank up and put it right next to the wheel. Oh, I see. Oh, okay, very good, very good, okay. You know, it is a fascinating idea and design. I, I, 
because as a kid, it just, well, how, how does that work? I mean, they never explained in the end how it worked, you know. Yeah, well, uh, um, you know, we're, we've, we've had an uh, interesting history. Uh, we've sold bikes all around the world. Uh, it's really been in five major markets, recreation, hunting, Right. Uh, military has adopted it. We've seen it in agriculture for crop checking in various applications. Single cylinder? It's a single cylinder. Okay. Now, I imagine the pull start is in case the battery is dead or incapacitated. If you pull the battery right out of the bike, you can pull start. Right. And it'll so, work so it's got So yeah. it's got a magneto type. It's got backup. Everyone yeah. likes backup. Right. Uh, you know, when we have a prepper model with survivor kits that'll go anywhere. So if everything, a natural disaster occurs, you can get out of Dodge and climb over the rubble yeah. pile and keep going. It's interesting that you mentioned that because we went out and we, we shot a piece with the U-2 pilots and the U-2 plane. And when I got in the cockpit and looked, I noticed the gauges all appeared to be 50 years old and they all appeared to be mechanical gauges, not electronic. They all had you know, an oil line or pressure line going. And I thought, why is it? And the guy said, because it works. Right. You know, we want, we want a backup, we want something. If the electronics go down, we don't lose all right. the kit, you know, same type of thing. So people wonder why they do that, especially the military must love that. They love, they love the fact that it could it, it withstand an EMP pulse, an electrical magnetic pulse, that this bike will survive that because there's, not, there's no computer on board. It's back to basics, right. it's carbureted, it's so simple. Right, yeah, and I guess if you're driving that and somebody shoots a, what did you call it? A, 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 What's the, the uh, EMP pulse? EMP pulse. <laughs> you're dead anyway. You know? <laughs> you know, really. I hope not. And, and you're going 30 miles an hour, and he's got this electronic. Yeah. yeah, that's okay. Tell me about the trailer. Is is this your design, or is this a factory? Piece? It's a factory design. Okay. There's a uh, there's been a great demand for how am I going to carry my gear. We've had uh, multiple different trailers, but this one really works well because it has a, a universal joint that can flex up and down and sideways. Place. And it's a single wheel. It's a single wheel. It just looks like, remember, Native Americans had that papoose looking thing to fit on that the back. That was the original concept, because yeah, it was yeah. so simple. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> interesting, okay. And this universal joint looks, again, everything looks massively overbuilt. This looks like a, a giant trailer hitch that you we've, would. We've tried lesser ones, and they don't work as well. Right. So we have to stay with things that we totally trust. That's the whole bike is about using the same bearing 18 times, keeping it simple design, keeping it really rugged. Right, now I notice some pieces, these appear to be standard. Uh, yeah, well, those, you, are, those you, are Magura, right, right. from Germany. Right, uh, right. We don't have a lot of foreign components on our bike. Right. We're mostly American made. We make the frame, we, we weld our own wheels, we put the bike together in New Hampshire. It's our transmission design. We actually own the clutching. We do everything. But there's a few items like the brake levers. Magura is such a high quality brake. Right, exactly. We use that. We're not the best you can get. Yeah, we're not going to screw around on quality. Right, right. OK. Now, this, uh, uh, this front end appears to be, I don't remember this. I remember the, oh, no, this side you have the, yeah. the cover. Yeah, that's, well, that, the original that's design, the we had one chain coming down to the wheels. So there was no, uh, there was no suspension. But one of the complaints we had through the years of listening to our customers is, one, they wanted the bike to be quieter, so we went from a two-stroke motor to a four-stroke motor. Right. And number two, they wanted more shock, shock absorption to make the ride more comfortable. Right. So we came up with this incredible design that, uh, that we initially introduced in the Middle East in Jordan. Is that an Earl's fork? Yeah, it's like that. It's okay. like imitation of okay. that, but with a lot of complications because we have all-wheel drive. Right. Early on, did you have a lot of chain breakage? Was that, oh, did well, that happen? Well, when we first built the bike, with the, with the first designs for the first years, yeah, we had issues. But then we gradually, we, we had so much great input from owners and refined and refined it. Now we have no problem with this front-wheel drive design. Okay, so Michael, tell us about, you put 12,000 miles on this, off, obviously all off-road mostly. And actually, it's probably about 50-50. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I've driven this on PCH down the Sunset Strip, Las Vegas well, Strip. Well, on PCH, 35 <laughs> miles an hour, you'd be the fastest guy there, so. Sometimes, yeah. You know, that's what, <laughs> you know, I have my Baker Electric. It's a 1909 electric car, and the top speed is 23. And when I would drive it to work, I'd pray for traffic on the 101, because I could get on. I'd go two <laughs> exits, and I'd go, oh. Perfect. Everybody's backed up, and I got on go 23, and oh, I, I, I I'd love go. to have a car like that in front of me all the time. Oh, yeah, that'd be it's great. Fabulous, it's fabulous. <laughs> yeah, okay. And of course, being automatic, everything happens on throttle, right? Well, it's really just hands operated. You don't have to do anything with your feet. Uh, if you're in tough terrain, uh, we have foot pegs that kick up and kick in. You're right. going to hit things. So we're designed this to be just hands operated. 
And how can you drop down to another gear? All right, we have a transmission right, uh, right here in this knob with three selection ranges. Okay. So the first range is zero to 10, then there's a neutral, then there's zero to 22, and then there's the high end, which is zero to 35. Okay. The neutrals are useful because you can, we can do power takeoff off the bike, and we, ha we have uh, accessories such as pumps and generators we can mount right here. And who's, who's transmission? Uh, it's our design. Right. It's Rokon's design, right. and we, it's completely our design. Uh, we source the gears, the housings. It's all our drawings. It's all, we build it at Rokon. Very good. Well, I mean, it's fascinating. You know, it's interesting to me that this company has come back because I remember as a kid, and I, maybe in the early 80s, did it kind of go away for a while? So here's the history. Um, in, like a lot of things, in the 80s, you recall, four-wheelers were introduced in America, and uh, a lot of people went, if, if you go back in the 60s and 70s, it was all dirt bikes and uh, bikes of some kind for right. off-road. Right. Uh, but then it, the four-wheeler came in, and a lot of people went to that. But we kind of hung in there. Uh, there was a weak period. Um, but I acquired the company in 1991, and it was because of the passion of the owners. Talking to people like Mike, it's right. just, it just keeps you going. You want to you wanna get their ideas, you learn, and we kept putting energy and energy back into it, and, and we just kept going. We and I imagine it'll run on practically any octane-rated fuel, the lowest. Yes, yeah. yes. You, can, you can use canned gas, you can use low octane right, gas, pretty right. much anything will go in that motor and burn. Cool, I love the fact that you just unbolt this and the tank comes off and you train, okay. So now it holds how much in the wheel? Two and a half gallons per, per wheel. And imagine you could put scotch or something else in there. People do, yeah, yeah. people do, beer, yeah, yeah. scotch. I mean, yeah. I've had people who've ridden into high altitude in uh, you know, Washington going hunting and then they just bring water because they have no, it's a simpler place to carry water. Right. And water uh, provides a little additional traction because you have it right sitting on the tire. Now when you go hunting, it, it's strapping a moose to the front of this seems like it might be. You, want, you wouldn't do that. No, no. Um, you Put would, it in the back. You, you drag it off the back. Um, okay. they, they'll, they'll do this kind of sled. Some, they have homemade sleds, plastic wrapping. Okay. It's amazing where this can drag. Uh, people have taken very large elk. It's very popular for elk hunting in Idaho, Montana, and Colorado. Right, right. It's here in LA, it's hard to get an elk home. So, <laughs> you, I mean, you've got that, yeah. Is this standard, this, uh, this, this piece here? This, this is, almost looks like a tailgate this, on it. Th this rack is a specialty rack okay. we build. We build a lot of specialty racks for different designs. Um, we have uh, something new called the uh, universal accessory rail, where we can mount shovels, entrenching tools, right. all different stuff, because everyone's well, using that, it for... I was gonna say, I mean, if you see yeah. a female owner, don't go, hey, nice rack. <laughs> you'll, get, you'll get punched in the head, you know, so exactly. just be careful what you say. Okay, now is this the standard color, kind of the army green? Well, this is a really popular color. Because I know uh, you're a veteran, right? Thank it's, you. It's, yes, it's an exact yeah. match to a World War II Jeep, just like the, the Jeep over there. I, I mean, looked up the color. I know you're, uh, you're an Afghan war veteran. Is that why you got the military color? No, I just kind of like the look of it. Yeah. It wasn't specifically because of that. My mother wanted me to get a red one. Oh, really? She's into red right now. Oh, okay. One, but, yeah. <laughs> and they come, uh, in, they come in any color you have, want? Or? We have six colors predominant. Um, we have red, yellow, orange. Okay. We've got black, uh, forest green, and olive drab. I'm surprised you don't do a camo. Would this be camouflage? Well, we do camo. We, do, we sell a camo version where we camo up the seats. I'm anxious to hear it, how quiet it is. Because you say, as a hunter, obviously you're going through the woods and... Well, you, it, well, this bike is nice because you can stand next to it at idle, you hardly hear it. But, right. um, you know, the, the, the two strokes were quite a, kind of noisy and that was a problem right. for yeah. hunting, so that's why we switched. And imagine you didn't get the torque with the two stroke, right? You can only get it when you got it fully revved yeah. up <laughs> to yeah, 8,000. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> had to be way high. That's why a four stroke seems like Yeah. And imagine you need an oil cooler, right? It's not no. so stressed. No, there's is no this way. your air intake here? Yes. So you want that obviously as high as possible. Yes, so okay. you, out of out of water crossings. I'm and almost like surprised that. you don't have a with snorkel. Yeah, well, we've done that too. Oh, That's okay. possible. Yeah. So Michael, what, what's the toughest place you've taken this? Well, scariest is Northern California roads. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's yeah, yeah. that's a whole thing, but. Uh, up in Colorado, up in uh, I was in Uray, taking it up through up 10,000 feet and into some of the passes up there. Uh, that was a lot of fun. Now at 10,000 feet, do you have to adjust the carburetor? I actually did put in uh, the optional jet that they, they, you can provide, you know, there's different right, stages right. about two, but I put in the medium one that got me to 8,000 feet and was still working fine above 10. So do people look at you strange when you pull into town? Because most people have never seen this. I have any idea what I get a lot of double takes. Yeah. Uh, I get a lot of people stopping when I stop for gas. Um, 
I carry brochures with me now just because it got to the point where it was it was easier to hand out brochures than to, than to sit there for another 45 yeah. minutes and, and yeah. talk to people about it. Uh, there's a lot you can see. Everybody that looks at it looks at it with a different point of view, and they see a different bike. Right. You know, you sort of see what you want to see out of it, and it's such a versatile vehicle. You can make it into anything you want it to be. Did you ever run into one of these in the armed service and the armed forces when you were in there? I didn't. No. I didn't. Uh, there were a couple times when I thought that this would have been a decent thing yeah. to have. And tell me how you found out about it again. You, did, you, did you see it in a magazine? Did you I see saw it? it online. I think I was just cruising through YouTube or, right. or you know, and uh, looking up motorcycles, and, and I happened to catch a glimpse of one of these. And then, yeah, click that button, and then it was, you know, for a few years I was sort of foc focused on it. And uh, do you have a dream trip, someplace you want to take it? I um, am looking into doing the backcountry discovery routes now. Okay. I'll be heading out to the desert uh, next week to start some sort of preliminary trials on, on what's the best setup for that particular, um, you know, adventure. And what do you carry in the wheels? Have you put any liquids in there at all? Gasoline or water? I tend to keep them empty right. just because I've never run in, I've never run out of gas. I mean, I have an external one gallon tank there. Okay. And that is, you know. Where is that? On the other side right here. Oh. It's this little rotapax. Oh, there it is down there. Oh, yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. And uh, I've run this thing dry a few times. It takes, it takes a while to do it. Um, and then, I, yeah, just stick in three quarters of a gallon of gas, and it gets me where, where I need to right, be. Right, right. Uh, so I've never actually had to load the tires yet. Uh, it's one of the things I'm, I'm thinking about doing in the desert just for, to see how it reacts to that. So when you, uh, when you go out with one of these, do you stay out for... Two days, a weekend, what do you, I mean, you're camping obviously, right? Well, personally, I don't camp too often just right. because of, you know, other things I've got going on. But uh, yeah, it's ideal for, you know, you could set this thing up for 72 hours completely in the middle of nowhere without problem, right. without right. a problem. And what do these sell for? Well, we have price range runs from 6,700 up to 8,500 right now. Oh, okay. Well, that seems more than reasonable. Especially if you're made in America, that that seems that's great, and they don't really change. I mean, you can, <laughs> you know, my dad used to buy lock lawnmowers when I was a kid. You remember those? The things that come out because the lock from 1938 is exactly like the one he <laughs> bought in '68. It's exactly like the last one in '88. I mean, you know, it's got the when the yeah. sides come out. You know, it's a it's a big Briggs and Stratton. Yes, of course, oh, yeah, same, very powerful. Same type of deal. Same type of well, deal. Well, we try to keep consistent with the look. I mean, uh, you know, motorcycles have always have a certain look, brand to brand. We right. have the same look. Um, we 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 we're a basic, go anywhere, simplified motorcycle designed to do a job, go anywhere. I just see more and more of these now. Is this like your? I don't see golden era, but does this seem like a... We're, we're in a golden era like, of Rokan now. Like, like a up. new uh, people have sort of rediscovered this, and there's more people going outdoors, and we, they want simple life and all that. We have, um, people have tried four-wheelers, and they're looking for alternatives. This is a safer version because it's safer to be in the mountains on a vehicle that weighs only 200 pounds rather than something that's 800 pounds. Is that what it weighs, 200 Yeah, it pounds? only weighs about 218 pounds. Well, that's down. amazing. Yeah. Because, I mean, this looks it massive. Lo it me. looks big. If you had said to me it weighs about 550, I would go, no. oh, that's okay. No, the idea in, in safety, you want to have minimize your weight, right. maximize your, your uh, torque. Okay, that, those, that, that's what we do. And when it falls over, you want to be able to pick right. it up. With so it's down. like yeah. one other guy falling on you. It's not yeah. like four guys falling on you. Right, right. Okay, so it's, it's, it's simpler, it's lighter, it goes more places, and it's easy to maintain. Have you had a lot of guys fall on you? I'm just curious. <laughs> no, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, fall, I don't, no, I don't look my, forward to that. Yeah, I try, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm pretty good at staying well, on the bike. I mean, that's the whole thing about bike. I remember one time, uh, a, a cop on a big police bike with every piece of equipment came to the rock star, which everybody hangs out. Yeah, here, I've heard and of it. his bike fell over, Ooh. and everybody's <laughs> laughing at him. And this guy went over with one hand, picked it up. People, Ooh, okay, thank you very much. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that was like an 850 pound bike, yeah. and nobody's laughing when he picked it up no, with one hand. No one's laughing. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 
Oh, that's a well, 208. That's amazing. Yeah, keeping that's, keeping yeah. the bike lightweight and yeah. maximizing the torque are keys to this whole project yeah. to make mm -hmm. this work because it, it, it increases safety and it also increases where you can go. Yeah, I imagine you can almost even go to some carbon fiber. Well, this is, this is well, that's AB, light. ABS plastic, yeah, that's you know, it's so yeah, simple. Yeah, it's yeah. Uh, vacuum formed. We, we, we try to pick items on the bike that are lighter. Have you had any problems when you're on the road? On the road, no, no. no. Uh, I finally got to the point where I put enough miles on it that some of the normal wear and tear pieces, Right. Uh, which, you know, I had to replace a seal in the front miter box. Are um, you more likely to pull start it or easy electric start? I usually start? pull start. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I just, it's there. I, I'll electric start when I'm, if I suddenly, you know, decide to just turn off the engine and I'm just sitting on the bike, then I'll you use, use a lead electric. acid battery or a lithium? We use a, not a lead acid, but it's a sealed AGM battery. Gotcha. Just oh, okay. like, just like, battery. like yeah, in yeah. a computer. Right, yeah. right, okay. All right, very good. Can we start it up and hear what it sounds like? Yeah. Yeah, I've got the keys. I'm surprised he even has a key. It... <laughs> so is the clutch like centrifugal? Like you, can't yep. can you, you can't rev it at idle. Yeah. So with this slipper clutch, you, you can't if you don't open the throttle wide open now, the, the bike would move away, right? If he's engaged, he's in neutral. So oh, you, neutral. oh, you're in neutral? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. okay. That's right, you have the neutral. We have two neutrals. Yeah. So you have like a granny gear, which would get you up to any kind of hill. Yeah. And then you have second and then third. The no. high speed, 35 mile an hour. Oh, my God. 95% of the time for this application, you're going to ride in second. It's yeah. 0 to 22. It does pretty much everything you need to do off-road. Right. Well, I'd love, can I take it for a ride? I'd love to try it. Yeah. Cool. Give it a shot. Yeah. You know, it's not as odd as I thought. The stranger sensation is more than the tires. They're big tires and they're low pressure, so you can feel them compress, so you get kind of wobbly things. But as a motorcycle, it actually feels well, almost normal. I can't tell if the front wheel is a driving wheel. You know, I mean, not in any hurry. Probably we'll be getting run over by faster vehicles, you know? It, it, it pulls fine, it drives nice, it's very comfortable. I mean, I was expecting some kind of 1965 mini bike shoulder pounding ride, but it's, 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 it's actually very nice. It's amazing how easy it is to climb over any kind of hill. All that loose dirt, an ordinary motorcycle, that back wheel would be spinning and throwing dirt up in the air. But with this two wheel drive, it just grips. And now that I'm in low, I think I could, well, I could probably climb that, but it's not my motorcycle. But let's, you can uh, do that. let's see Go what else. Huh? You can do it. No, I'm not going to climb that. Michael says I should try and climb that. He's a military veteran, I'm the idiot. Now this shows you that a good idea can last forever. This thing was developed 50, almost 60 years ago. Same basic design, same basic principle, but it still works very well. I mean, it's amazing how easy you can climb. I mean, look, I'm my first time riding it here, and these guys are kind enough to let me just pull off road for a second and screw around. But you really could climb that hill just about anywhere. It's amazing how that front tire literally just pulls you up and over any sort of uh, 
and he saw the obstacle. If this was a regular motorcycle, he'd be fighting that front wheel like this, you know, but it, it's doing the work. It's pulling you through, and the rear is pushing you through, and uh, it's a lot of fun. You know what this, well it's not a centrifugal clutch, it's a slipper clutch, it really makes it easy. All you have to do is turn the throttle and you go. I mean, obviously if it was uh, a race bike, it wouldn't be the best way, but you open the throttle and it's very linear, linear. it pulls you right along. No herky-jerkiness, it's really, <laughs> it's really good. It just shows you how a basic idea can endure when it's really a good idea. Often I ditch my crew and tell them to go home and I go for a ride. So I'm sorry I'm a little bit late, but it's so much fun. It really is nice to drive. It is so unlike what it looks like, you know, as I said in the video probably once before, I was expecting some 1965 mini bike, kidney pounding. But you know, these big balloon tires, they make it very comfortable. Uh, it's really wonderful. You gotta make a 650cc version. It could happen, Jay, but. Uh. Ah! <laughs> well, you know, the biggest thing is I think getting run over by faster traffic. Uh, no question. We got up to about yeah. 40 miles an hour seemed about right. Is there a governor on this? Because it feels like this motor's gotten no, more. No, it, it, it's just the way the clutch, it's parasitic clutching, loss it's the clutching. The, yeah, it's yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. Yeah, but it's basically how a good idea 60 years ago is still a good idea today. I mean, there's not much more improvement you could do other than maybe a little more power or maybe a mm -hmm. fourth gear just, right. just so you could get out of the way of trouble. But it was so much fun in the dirt because you know any any normal bike, you'd be open the throttle, you'd be kicking up a rooster tail of dirt behind you. And, <laughs> you know, whereas this thing, it's just really nice. So, Mike, thanks for letting us borrow it. I appreciate. Yeah, no problem. Thank Good luck. You. I think you're going to get a lot of orders after Th this. Thank you, Jay, for, yeah. for checking oh, yeah. it out. No, it's it's really uh, really fun, and it's made in America, so it's all up. Thanks, you guys. Thanks for watching. See you next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>